Can you imagine seeing exploitation, colonialization, capitalism, fascism, and not being critical about it? Usually these things are justified through ideology. Like, we exploit others because it is the natural order of things. We colonize others for their own good and to bring them democracy. However, to look at these things critically, we need to deconstruct ideology. The Frankfurt School was an academic movement or association of scholars that formed in the 1920s and intensified their work in the 1930s and 40s, consisting of intellectuals like Adorno, Horkheimer, Fromm, Benjamin and Marcuse, they formulated a critical social theory in opposition to contemporary socio-economic systems like capitalism, fascism and communism. Their main concern was to defy mystifying and mind-enslaving ideologies and offer a thorough critical apparatus that would enable one to identify power structures, dependencies and manipulation in society in order to pursue emancipation from them. The Frankfurt School is hence known for its critical theory. Critical theory is at its core a thorough rereading of Marxism through Marx's lesser known works from the philosophic economic manuscripts that appeared in the 1930s. Critical theory's early main body of work is the Dialectic of Enlightenment by Horkheimer and Adorno. In these philosophical fragments, they try to lift the veil that Enlightenment has cloaked Western society with, believing that it brought us the apothesis of human progress which is still continuing. But in their eyes, enlightenment has long already turned into mindless hedonism, inquisition and barbarism. Its technological and sociological insights and results has thrown humanity into a new dark age in which we have not become freer and more equal, but more manipulated and exploited under a false understanding of the world. The Frankfurt School's cultural Pessimism sees in the cultural industry of the West a deus ex machina that confuses, paralyzes and manipulates society. Music, movies, magazines, advertisements and commodities are being used to dull the minds and senses of humankind and to distract it from meaningful purposes and a real human experience. It is an industry that forges false dreams and interpolates its consumers with an enslaving ideology, depriving them of the possibility to pursue meaningful activities. The result of the Enlightenment is hence knowledge that has been used to create a system in which people are advised to lay back, enjoy themselves and to avoid social and political engagement. The only way to oppose the system is to critically be aware and cautious about its mechanisms of consumption. One needs to withstand the consumption of lower culture, which is nothing more than a standby experience of human existence. Critical theory has since then been contested and developed further. The excessive cultural pessimism of the early days of critical theory have been surpassed, and while it is still used as a theoretical device to enable emancipation, its natural adversaries like pop culture have been treated less negatively, stigmatized in the recent decades. Nevertheless, critical theory remains a force to reckon with and is still widely applied, especially in the studies on culture, gender and technologies.